Today, captive breeding is not only a worldwide hobby, but it's also an essential form of conservation in itself. But if these animals have to be under captive conditions, sometimes going as natural as possible is better for both keeper and the animal. So here at Garden State Tortoise, we like to practice naturalistic keeping, and that's what this video is all about. Creating a good naturalistic habitat starts with studying a turtle's wild habitat. In this 2,600 square foot enclosure, we house our North American wood turtles. This is a species that's always on the move. They're generally very active by nature, so we've tried to give them ample space. We've gone as far as purchasing Delaware Riverstone, three-fourths of an inch, to help replicate the gravel or sediment found in the mountainous regions that they're actually found in. We have a 30-foot running stream powered by a 6,000 gallon per hour pump, which empties into this giant pool that you see behind me. The turtles are able to safely hibernate, breed, feed, and do other things safely in here. The way we made the stream was by excavating the pool first. All the dirt that we took out of there, we put up here, and then we tiered it. We, we made it come down gradually in a slope, and that made it very easy for the pump to pull the water once we installed it from the pool, run underground, spout it up here at the top, and just continuously flow down. Running, clear, mountainous type water is what wood turtles really require to stay healthy, and that's just what we've done for them right here. In addition to planting things like hostas and other safe plants for them, we allow weeds and other natural uh, vegetation in the area to come in. This helps the turtles gain further refuge and it also enables them to feel comfortable to search for their own food. We always have to feed the turtles of course when they're in our care, but it's really great to see them actually behaving in a natural manner to where they can find their own food. Areas like this make it easy for them to pull worms from the ground. As we all know, wood turtles actually worm stomp. And behind me there are brush piles, plenty of pine needles, leaf litter, and other shrubs back there. At any given moment, usually in the mornings, especially after a rain, the turtles effortlessly can find what they're looking for. Plant life doesn't necessarily have to be what's found in their wild habitat. I mean, a lot of times it's hard to actually get your hands on that stuff. So we've chosen very hardy plants that are safe if an animal were to chew on them or try to rip a couple pieces off of it, nothing's going to happen to them. They're hardy grasses, uh, spiria, hostas, all kinds of things that you know are very hardy, come back every single year, come back fuller every year, and really help to make the turtles feel at home. Vegetation goes a long way in making the turtles feel safe so they can seek refuge. It's important to remember that wood turtles, just like many other species, are very, very, very good climbers. As you can see right here by my friend's nails, she uh, can easily scale a chain link fence. Those that do use chain link should always bend it over at the top significantly to make sure that if they do manage to get up, they'll come back down. We don't like to use anything that they can see through. It seems to drive them nuts. Creating a visual barrier by means of pressure treated wood sunken into the ground to prevent digging, built up with posts, and capped off in the corners to prevent further climbing because they can still get out in corners no matter what uh, goes a long way and it has worked very well for us for many years. There's a lot of different methods that can be used for fencing but when you have as much property as we do and you have to build that many pens, wood is cost effective and goes a long way. Uh, the proper pen placement is very important too. Wood turtles do require quite a bit of sunlight, but they also need the shade. So we carefully place this pen in a spot of, your, of our yard where they get just that. Species like spotted turtles are also sun dwellers, but just like wood turtles, they do require shade. Uh, if spotted turtles get too warm, they tend to get sick, sit out overnight. Um, and what we've done here is we've basically tried to create kind of a canal or sort of a cedar water, black water type uh, ditch for them. Uh, so behind me here is just that. And it's a fairly skinny but fairly deep, long pond, if you will, that is really choked out with select vegetation. We have parrot's feather, we have different grasses that are found around here, uh, but we also make use of water hyacinth, and the reason is because it's very inexpensive to purchase, very easy to find at pond stores, and it really, really gives the turtles places to hide. Um, it also helps to filter the water, because here we don't do any filtration, we do all biological ponds. They're all peat-based, uh, with sediment, gravel, sand, and as I've already said, they're really choked out with uh, live vegetation.
So again, proper pen placement is really crucial. Uh, this is the section of the yard where we house our Asian species, and this is one of our Cora Beretti pens. Uh, this species is really not fond of being in direct sunlight, so we chose a shady portion of the yard where they get spotty sunlight. We've given them uh, very thick vegetation. We've given them rotting logs and driftwood. They also have aquatic areas choked out with more water hyacinth and duckweed so that they can find refuge even in the water if they want to. There's a very mulchy base substrate in here. It's very deep. It's easy for the females to lay eggs, and it also uh, makes it very easy for them to find invertebrates to eat, just like the eastern box turtles. Lots of worms, slugs, snails, and other things that they can get their mouths on. And they thrive in these style pens. The Kohelan or aquatic box turtle, Terrapin Kohela, is an important project for us here. It's one of the few projects that we actually work with zoos on and we are active members of the SSP. Creating this habitat was a lot of fun. Uh, I may never get to visit their native range in my lifetime, but friends that have have helped me carefully decorate and properly design the unit that they're in here. Uh, it's equipped with a lot of sand, just as it would be in the wild, and there's a lot of uh, aquatic vegetation as well as terrestrial vegetation. These tall grasses next to me and behind me and to the sides are actually great for the females to root into when they lay their eggs. Despite their critical status, they're actually very prolific in captivity and they definitely thrive in this style habitat. Now, right now you may be wondering why it's a little bit shaded. It's because it's very early morning. But uh, in just an hour or so, this is going to be completely beat down with sun and will remain that way for the better portion of the entire day. Again proper pen placement and it really seems to uh, help these turtles to behave in natural manners. Being creative in habitat design should never be underestimated either because just like I'm doing right now you could be standing in a pen and not even know it. This is a portion of the yard where we really had to do very little to make it accommodating for North American box turtles. In here we house eastern box turtles and they are fully equipped with basically a little mini forest. They've got a sunlit area where they do their egg laying and they usually come out for food. But just like the wood turtles and the spotted turtles, they have a wide array of natural areas that they can select food on their own. They'll tunnel through the vegetation. They make uh, very good use of all the leaf litter in here and they find slugs, earthworms, pill bugs, and plenty of snails. Um, the turtles always maintain very good weight and of course we, just like the others, we do always feed them. But uh, it really is, uh, a positive thing to see them fending for themselves. Uh, they safely hibernate in here and uh, you really can't even see the fence line but it's all around you. It's just carefully selected, well thought out, and it has everything that these turtles need to live long normal lives. One of our primary focuses here at Garden State Tortoise is the tortoises of the genus Testudo. These are classically known as Hermans, Greeks, Marginateds, and Egyptian tortoises. Now, most of the Testudos experience the four seasons in nature, winter, spring, summer, fall, and winters are usually pretty harsh throughout most of their ranges. However, in the summer, they occur in these warm spots. It gets really hot, it's usually primarily dry, even with rainfall. Uh, so we've tried to replicate that here at Garden State Tortoise and we chose the sunny spot of the yard. So from early, early in the morning all the way until uh, nightfall, this area is beat down with sun. We've given them low-lying vegetation, very well-drained soil with sandy consistencies and some gravel to it too. And we've gone as far as making sure that they have cold frames or greenhouses for those days that are unfavorable. Because let's face it, in the Northeast we get a fair amount of that. By using cold frames or greenhouses, they can thermoregulate and do what they need to do when they want to. And also, it helps females, if they're not getting optimal conditions outside the greenhouse in the pen, they can use the greenhouse for oviposition or laying eggs. Um, making them feel comfortable, as we do other species on our property, is very important. Um, and sometimes it's as simple as just making a bed of straw. These tortoises frequent highly vegetated areas that do have open expanses, but they freak out when they're just left out in the open. They've got to be able to feel comfortable. So, uh, you know, just giving them a bed like this, and as you can see, it's very hot today. It's almost 90 degrees. Um, but these little Western Hermits tortoises from Mount Etna, Italy, 
are rooted right down here into the moist um, straw. And they can achieve humidity in here and remain comfortable. They tend to venture out mo uh, mainly in the early morning and also again in the evening. But uh, right now, they're very comfortably rooted down in here where they can escape the heat, stay nice and cool and moist. And uh, they'll go about their business later on. So the testudo tortoises are generally uh, at home in sunlit locations, well-drained soil, low-lying vegetation. And if you look behind me, you can see the row of all these different pens that we've made for them. All different types of hermits, tortoises, Greek tortoises, and even marginated tortoises find themselves at home. The, every single pen is fully equipped with a cold frame or greenhouse, as we stated earlier. And this is just a general idea of how we did it. Uh, you can even see some of the predator protection we do. There's cameras up in the distance, sonar devices, and also, if you see these yellow things sticking out everywhere with a wire, that's our electric fence. And that's something we're going to get to next. Whether we're dealing with small species or those that are going to get really, really large, like this young Aldabra tortoise, predator deterrence is something that we take very, very seriously. Uh, we believe in using a combination of methods to be more safe than sorry. Cameras, both wired and wireless, motion sensors, electric fences, high-powered ones in particular, traps set every single night, and also sonar devices. Yard Sentinel is an inexpensive sonar device that can be purchased through Amazon.com and it can be set to different frequencies to deter the predator you're trying to get rid of. Naturalistic keeping is something that comes along with being fortunate enough to keep these animals in captivity. It can be fun, it enables you to be creative, um, and it does take a lot of work, but in the end it's really worth it. It's not the only method out there that works, we all know that, but it's the route that I've chosen to go here and I couldn't be happier. The animals have refuge, they have sunlight, they have shade, they have everything that they need, and uh, some of them have actually grown pretty fond of me, I guess. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope the conference was as amazing as it always is. And uh, I look forward to hearing from everybody. And please don't forget to check us out at GardenStateTortoise.com and TheTurtleRoom.com. Thank you guys.